got something super awesome for you. This is something which took a while for me to code and come to. This is something which is very interesting. It will feel like you're using your brain and your logic. So stay with me. And those who may be having their screens in front of them and coding on a Jupyter Notebook or any other ID, feel free to code with me, okay? To make this video like not super long, I decided to keep the code and spend more time explaining it. In the link given below, which you should actually, after listening to the explanation, you should look at the link given below. You can actually go and get my, you know, my code free, absolutely free as a free giveaway on my website. Okay. So you can just go there and you'll find uh, what you need to in the description box. So let's dive deep into this. As many of you know, I am a trader and a independent research analyst in which I research everything starting from trend lines to machine learning. Whatever suits the domain of trading, uh, quantitative trading, and anything to do with price specifically, because I started my trading career as a technical analyst. So all of us know that uh, at some level, we have got uh, something called a, we have got something called a RSI, a Relative Strength Index, right? And because we have Relative Strength Index, this helps us you know, get an idea of how the momentum is. Not getting too much into deep into this because in my YouTube channel, you'll find a lot about technical analysis if you go to the past videos. There you can find out. But the essence of RSI, Relative Strength Index, is to show us the momentum. And out of the few types of signals or two few types of uh, implications the RSI reading has, one of the implications which RSI reading is very famous for as well, are divergences, okay? Now, what do you mean by divergence? Let's understand this. When the price is moving at a certain pace, just imagine that you are a car. I mean, you are sitting in a car and your car is going at a very nice high speed, right? It is running on a highway and then there is a big U-turn which is about to come. So before you take the U-turn, you're going to slow down the car. So it is very often the same thing with price. When the price is in an uptrend, it is going at a strong, nice pace. But before the price is actually taking a U-turn, before the price is actually taking a U-turn, as in from the bullish trend, it is turning to the bearish trend, is actually showing us something called divergence in RSI. Now, I'll give you an example. Let's take this for example. The price is going in a very handsome and a amazing momentum. Okay? It's running like a stallion. And then suddenly you see there is a price drop and there's a last high which is above the previous high. Now while the next high, which is this high, is above the previous high, and this is the daily chart, mind you. So the RSI is no longer in gear with the price movement. So RSI was a good harmony with the price but no longer is it in good harmony with the price. And this gives us a sense that the price is weak. And either it may give a very strong reversal or there is a chance that it can give us a deep correction. And as a last, uh, and sometimes we see this, that the price actually, the RSI cools off and price becomes very, very sideways for time. Too. But overall, the thing is that the momentum or the steam is down. The steam is no longer as it was. Okay. So this can give us very strong implications to create a trading model as well. And I, for that matter, have used uh, what I'm going to teach you right now in both, uh, not just the practical terms of visualizing on a price chart, but also in terms of coding it in an algorithmic trading system. Okay. So this is something I'm going to give and you need to check this out step by step. Okay, so first we import the important libraries. I'm not getting too much into this. Most of you who are familiar with coding are familiar with this. So apart from pandas, which is very important for data frames, one of the libraries which I'm going to use is uh, the technical analysis library. Okay, uh, like this time I'm going to code the RSI. Uh, instead of coding the RSI from ground up, I'm going to simply use the library. For the divergence is what we're going to do our hard work on. 
Okay, let's understand this. Uh, for the visualization, we have got matplotlib dot plot. Okay, now in order to give us a nice looking theme, okay, to give us a nice looking uh, theme, gray and sweet and sexy kind of a theme, uh, which you're going to see in some time. This is the code you're going to use. And again, I'm not getting too much into this, but with the submodules over here, like. All you need to do is, you know, I'm going to share this anyway, so you can just copy paste it later, but uh, you need to import the cycler, okay? So, and import matplotlib as MLP over here, and these are the different codes for the various colors. You're going to see that because I often use this these days. Uh, I already have these two cells pretty much every time I'm coding. Sometimes there are more uh, libraries that I import, okay? So let's quickly get into uh, our code, okay? So this is 10 years of Nifty daily data, which I'm pulling out from Yahoo Finance. So all of you can see this. This is the start date, this is the end date. All I need to do is call this function to get the data later. So I'm going to do that. Then we have coding the RSI. I'm going to simply use the TA library. So the TA library is having the inbuilt, uh, you know, TA.momentum RSI indicator where I have already put RSI period as 14, okay? So the 14 RSI period is the default period. Now, as a technical analyst, as an algorithmic trader, as a quantitative researcher, I love to experiment. That is one thing which I'm very open to. I actually take up a different, you know, parameters and sets of parameters and try out different things. Going forward also, we're going to see something to do with parameters. So stick with me. Okay, so with this function, we will get the RSI. Now quickly, let's jump on over here. So by the time I'm going to run these two functions, right, the coding RSI and preparing data, my data is going to, data frame is going to look like this. So we not just download the uh, complete data uh, from Yahoo Finance, which will be open, high, low, close, the date and the volume. And if you notice, just to make sure that the dates don't interfere because uh, sometimes that can happen when you're coding different things, okay? And here it is important for me for a reason you will know. So that the date doesn't interfere because of market holidays, etc. I am I have created this code in a way where the data dot index, so there's a separate column for 0, 1, 2, 3 as the index. The reason being, I don't want the date to become the index column, otherwise it will interfere with my divergence code. You can, you know, you're, you're free to do what you want to. Uh, this is the path I'm following, just in case you see, read, or apply any of this, uh, you'll know what I'm doing, exactly. I see a lot of uh, young people these days use a lot of chat GPT and whatnot, nothing wrong with it. But one of the most important things is to understand what you're coding and the logic which it should go by. So that when you are building upon one idea after another, you don't have to go back and look and you know cement the foundations again. You can do it step by step now and learn step by step now. And then when you have to implement it in your trading strategy, etc., then you have the flexibility because you understand the code so well. Okay. So now in this section, I have commented this entire cell. Let me uncomment it and show you. So here is the function for the RSI divergence. What you see over here is the look back period, okay? So why I'm going to use the look back period is because when I'm looking at RSI and a divergence, I am actually, uh, basically what I'm doing is I am comparing the recent RSI or the RSI for today with the RSI of the recent past. So I need to look back at certain periods. Say for example, I think this is an RSI divergence, which is pretty clear. So here the price has made a clearly a lower low, but the RSI has not made a lower low, okay? So for this reason, what I need to understand, what I need to do is I need to actually uh, look back at a certain period so I can compare the peaks and the troughs. So if my code is going to look back at enough periods, then it will be able to actually find out if there is a divergence at this point, okay? So this is a look back period, which you are free to change later. But in case you don't put anything as an argument over here, the look back period is going to deem to be 10, 
Okay, you can make it 20 or whatever you like. Then we are going to create a completely empty list over here, which is basically a, a divergence points. Okay, so basically what is going to happen is through these uh, entire range of the data. Okay, so for the range of the data, what I have done is I have taken the length of the data, right? And I'm going to go through the look back period. So if the length of the data is 100 and look back period is 10, then it is going to go through every, every 10 set of days. In case here I'm talking about days because my data is on the daily chart. Okay, so 10 days, 10 days, 10 days. And what it is going to look back so now what we're going to do is it is going to, it is already iterating. Okay. So what it is doing is iterating through the, uh, you know, entire, entire range. Okay. Entire range through the data frame, which we have. Okay. So every time we are going to go through the look back period. Okay. So this is the range of the look back period, which is set of 10 days. Then, uh, because our look back period is 10. So we're going to have a variable. Uh, in which we are going to store recent RSI values. Okay. So in the range of the look back period we've had, the recent RSI values are all stored in this. So in the last say 10 days, if there were 10 different RSI values, they're stored in this. And the recent price values are stored in this, which is according to the data close. And in this line of code, which is a bit long, we have created two conditions this condition for the bullish divergence and this condition for the bearish divergence. Okay. So we are going to see that these two types of divergences put together will be appended to this empty list called divergence points. Okay. Now, whenever we see that the divergence point is getting appended at the end of the, this thing, uh, like at the end of the for loop, when the for loop is done with, we are going to get out of the for loop and data divergence is equal to false. Wherever uh, data divergence is equal to false, there, so data over here for us is our data frame. Okay. So in that data frame, we have the divergence, uh, divergence column, which we have initiated and the entire column. Okay entire column is false. Okay. Now this divergent points, which is our basically the list, which he had created. Okay. If this is the divergence point, the list, which we have created now, wherever that is true, wherever there is something in the divergence point there, uh, we are going to mark the column of divergence as true. So we're going to have an extra column, which will say true, false, true, false, and so on and so forth. So mostly it will be false, 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 because you don't get like a divergence every day. But whenever there is a divergence, it will be true. Okay. So this is going to, in the end, return as the data frame and return data is written over here. So the reason why I commented this is because there's the same code over here, right? The same code over here. But now what I'm doing is over here, I actually found out that if there are very, very minor divergences, they are probably of no use to me. So I want a minimum of divergence on the RSI to be two. So what I did over here was that over here, while I was coding this most important condition, instead of the minimum and maximum alone, so what I did was that the minimum of the recent RSA values plus two. Okay. And over here, I did the maximum of the RSA values minus two. Okay. So if the highest RSA value is there and less than two, so you can make it plus three or plus 10 minus 10. That is completely up to you, depending on what your look back period you want. What is the kind of RSA divergence you're looking at? How? in the recent past you want to compare and to what kind of magnitude you, uh, magnitude change you want to compare. Okay. Because when we are looking at RSI visually, it is very easy to say something. Okay. This is what is happening. This is what is happening. Okay. But what happens is when we are looking at RSI on the code and the computer is actually going through, the program is actually going through each and every row and trying to find out something. 
then the entire paradigm changes, right? So this is how it works. Now, moving on. Uh, so what I have done over here is I have committed to this and I'm going to run only this line of code, okay? Now, moving on, just to make sure uh, that the RSI, which we are seeing, we need to plot this also. So let's see what happens when we plot it over here. And, you know, you can go through this code slowly. I'm not going to explain each and every bit of this. But what I will tell you is that the colors are borrowed from earlier what we have done. And some of the colors over here, which I have coded, is I have coded the RSI value as red. Okay. And I have marked wherever there is a divergence as a white, you know, O marker. Okay. So this is how it is going to look. And I have plotted these two together over here. So the figure size is slightly big. So let me just change it for you. Just a second. Uh, the figure size, I'll make it, uh, say, 10 by 7. And I think this is going to be a little more appealing and easy for you to, easy on the eye and fix the screen. Yeah. So this is how it is going to look. So how do I actually see? I see a lot of white dots over here, which is not something I like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just convert this data frame into the last, uh, say, 300, you know, rows, which is going to be the last 300 days. And let's look at the 300 uh, days or 300 plots and see the divergences. Now, these are the many divergences which are actually marked over here. So this is something which is very interesting. You actually want to, uh, you know, check it out. It's very, you know, one gets very curious. Oh my God, did I see so many divergences? But why are there so many divergences? And, you know, what is exactly going happening? Let's go to minus 100. Let's take only the last 100 iterations, 100 days, and we will understand something. So the divergences which are marked seem to be more than they actually are. But this is when our code catches it. When our code catches it, okay, so I'm going to just go to the latest chart. Okay, this is how the latest Nifty daily chart looks like. When the code catches it, um, there are far more divergences than I could actually imagine. So this is where you need to play around with the parameters of the look back period. And you need to also take a look at how uh, the change in the RSI, the magnitude of change which you're looking at. So if you look at make the look back period, say 20, you will get a different result, right? If you, uh, let me run this. Okay. So the look of it is going to change to some extent, right? So uh, what I would suggest is you go through this code, the link in the description box below. Also in the near future, we are starting a batch on algorithmic trading. So what you can go uh, do is simply go to technicallystarted.com and check out courses and check out the course and all the details written about the course about our algorithmic trading course, which starts on the 8th of July. Thank you so much. Have fun. Enjoy. See you.